No doubt about it, Norman Fell got a raw deal. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the awful way that the producers of Three's Company treated Norman Fell and Audra Lindley. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about a so-called feud that Norman Fell had with another classic television actor that you will immediately recognize. So stick around, folks. I think this one's going to be fun. You've got to hand it to Norman Fell. The guy knew when he had a good thing going. And the role of Stanley Roper was indeed a very good thing. For three seasons beginning in 1976, along with actress Audra Lindley, Fell was Jack, Chrissy, and Janet's landlord on Three's Company. Because I grew up in an extremely conservative home, I wasn't allowed to watch Three's Company when it originally aired. Apparently, the plot device of having Jack pretend to be gay was just too darn much for my father, and as a result, Three's Company was on the list of what he considered to be television smut. However, by the time the 80s had rolled around and Three's Company started showing up on reruns, the old man had grown extremely weary of trying to oversee everything. And because of that, I started watching as much Three's Company as possible. And while many young men my age were watching the show for Suzanne Summers, I actually thought that Janet was the cuter of the two girls. And, okay, I'll go ahead and say it. She just seemed a whole heck of a lot smarter. But more than anything else, I was a huge admirer of both John Ritter and Norman Fell. Both of these guys were genuinely funny, and their comedic timing, well, it was pitch perfect. To this day, I can still conjure up in my head that image of Stanley Roper and that wicked little smile of his. Yet Fell had a great thing going, and he did not want to give it up. Especially not to take a chance on a spin-off series for the Ropers, when the producers along with Audra started to apply pressure to Norman during the third season, Fell would politely and firmly decline to even engage in the conversation. He was happy. Happy to be on Three's Company. It was a huge hit. And hit TV programs? Well, they're kind of hard to come by. So at some point during that third season, the producers decided to offer Fell the equivalent of a money-back guarantee. Norman, they said? If the show tanks and it's canceled after one season, well, you and Audra can come back to Three's Company. We promise. Truthfully, from everything that I've read, it still sounds like he was hesitant to jump ship and take a risk. But in the end, he caved. And on March 13, 1979, the Ropers debuted to fantastic ratings. All spring and summer long, new episodes of the Ropers competed against reruns of other shows. And as you might guess, Stanley and Helen were triumphant. However, when the show returned again in the fall with more new episodes, ABC decided to move the program to a new time slot. And wouldn't you know it, ratings started to slip a bit. Don't worry, Norman kept telling himself, if things don't work out, we can go back to Three's Company. Of course, in the meantime, the producers of Three's Company had to fill the void left by the absence of the Ropers, and they did it with this guy. A big guy. Mr. Don Knotts himself. Don played the new landlord, Ralph Furley, who was an out-of-touch, aging swinger who didn't know that time had passed him by. He considered himself a ladies' man in much the same way that Deputy Barney Fife had. In fact, the similarities between Ralph Furley and Deputy Fife were plentiful. And truthfully, that is not a bad thing. Ralph Furley was a hoot, and with each passing episode, Stanley and Helen seemed to be more of a passing memory than anything else. So anyway, before I forget, let's get back to the Ropers. As the new season progressed, ABC moved the show around a few times, hoping that the superlative ratings that they had seen early on would return. Unfortunately for everyone, they did not. And the show was canceled on May 22, 1980, just 14 months after it premiered. It's okay, Norman told Audra. We can go back to Three's Company. So anyway, I think many of you know how this story ends. When they say you could never truly go home again, I think they may have been directly referring to Norman Fell. Despite his best efforts and multiple conversations with the producers of Three's Company, it turns out that neither he or Audra would be returning after all. You see, the Ropers had technically had two seasons. There was a short, abbreviated first season that ran from March to August in 1979, and then a full second season that ran from September 1979 to May of 1980. 
As such, the producers had technically honored their end of the agreement. Norman could have returned to Three's Company if it had been canceled during the summer of 1979, but it wasn't. And as such, Fell and Lindley were just plum out of luck. Over the years, all parties involved have expressed regret regarding how the whole deal played out. Fell certainly felt bad, but you know what? He didn't let that get him down. No way. Over the next decade and a half, Norman would make numerous appearances on TV. And while he was constantly working, he would never again have a hit TV series to call his own. Yep, way back then, Norman knew exactly how special it was to have a job to go to week after week. He didn't want to give it up. He really didn't. And end of the day, he probably shouldn't have had to. Post Three's Company and the Ropers, there are a couple of appearances worth pointing out, one of them being his 1989 appearance on John Ritter's Hooperman Dramedy. Remember that one? It was from Stephen Bochco, the guy who gave us Hill Street Blues, and it was supposed to be funny, but in a serious kind of way. And in 1997, just one year before his passing, Norman's final television appearance was on Ellen DeGeneres' sitcom. And wouldn't you know it, for his final bow, Fell once again played Stanley Roper. And now, this message. Radio Shack has a super half-price deal now on an 8-track car stereo tape player. Regularly $59.95, now just $29.95. You save $30 and get your choice of music wherever you drive. Put stereo 8-track players in two cars for the regular price of one. Or buy one and have enough money left over for car speakers and your first tape. Get on the road to savings now with this sale-priced realistic 8-track car stereo tape player. Only at Radio Shack. Attend... Hey, Nurse Alexander, Ultra Bright Toothpaste wants to proposition you. Right here? In a semi-private room? Here's the proposition. After using one tube of Ultra Bright, look in a mirror. If you had yellowing stains, you should see whiter looking teeth. Ultra Bright's rousing taste and whiter looking teeth. Now that's the best proposition I've had all year. Well, almost. Whiter looking teeth are just one tube away. So there's this guy, let's just call him Mark, who keeps posting on some of my YouTube videos about a feud between Norman Fell and Don Knotts. And despite my best efforts, I can't find anything to lead me to believe that that feud exists. And I really want to believe it because it involves Don pouring clam chowder all over Norman's head at the 1979 Emmys. What a great story! But I can't verify it, so I've got to think that as fun as that story is, it's probably just some sort of urban myth. What I did find, however, were numerous posts about a 40-year feud between these two guys. So the story goes like this. For over 40 years, the one and only Jack Klugman maintained a bitter and nasty feud with none other than Norman Fell. No idea what caused the feud, although it would seem worthwhile to mention that they're both from Philadelphia. Jack is a couple of years older. So it may have started there. For his part in his memoir, Tony and Me, Klugman never mentions Norman Fell at all. But if you think about it, if you're feuding with someone like Norman Fell, why would you mention it in your autobiography? It just wouldn't make sense. Fell, on the other hand, well, it seems like he's more forthcoming about the feud, saying, what has Klugman got that I haven't? What did he do differently? I could have killed his Oscar. I would have been great as Quincy. And I wouldn't have been so hammy. Klugman overacted in every scene. You want the show to be good? Pick me. You want a chain-smoking jackass who ruins any credibility for your project? I'll give you Klugman's number. So, based on that, it would seem like there was no love lost between these two guys. And the feud? Well, I guess you could ultimately say it was won by Klugman because Fell died in 1998 and Klugman didn't. So I guess Norman kind of forfeited. Jack even attended Fell's funeral saying, best funeral I've ever been to. I've never laughed so hard in years. I had the time of my life. Wow, just wow. But I think that quote kind of gave it away. Just when you think the story's over, it really isn't, because according to trusted sources via the One Poor Correspondent blog, not too long after Norman's passing, when pressed for more details about their lengthy and bitter feud, Klugman came clean and confessed that there was no feud at all. The whole thing 
was just a joke between the two of them. It turned out that these two crazy guys from Philly, well, they got along just fine after all. In fact, they were friends. And while I know there may be a few of you out there who are a little disappointed to find out that the whole thing was just a big charade between buddies, I have got to admit that I like the idea of Klugman attending Fell's funeral to mourn the passing of a friend a whole lot better than the idea that he might have been there to mock him and to declare victory. So there you go. A shorter video for what turns out to not be a very long feud, but instead an extremely lengthy hoax perpetrated by two very funny guys. Alright, so were you a fan of either Klugman or Fells? If so, let me know why in the comment section, and while you're at it, I would love a thumbs up. And I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my little channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.